You are watching Excess LaPorte County, Channel 97. Coming up next is the October 3rd, 2023 meeting of the LaPorte County Regional Sewer and Water District Board. You can find more information for this meeting by visiting www.accesslaportecounty.org. I like to call the October 3rd LaPorte County to our district meeting to order. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Thank Okay, I forgot my little thing here, so it's gonna go. Amanda? Present. And you went on a trip. Mitch? Here. Go ahead. Like Mark? Present. Marcella? Yes. Okay, John Carr? It's not here. <clears throat> Dahlia? Present. We have a quorum. Well, it's not here. Jerry. Oh, Jerry, Jerry Jackson is not here. <clears throat> okay, so we have a quorum. All right, approval of minutes in your packet. You should have the uh, August twenty uh, second meeting minutes. Uh, I retain a motion for approval. Motion to approve. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Man, it's approved. Or do we need a roll call vote? Cause oh, we do, don't we? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> it's going to be... We got a... Motion for approval. Okay. Roll call will be Amanda. Aye. Mitch. Aye. Mark. Aye. Marcella. Yes. Dahlia? Aye. I'll approve. Well, that brings us to public comments. Anybody wishing to speak needs to state their name and address for the record, and we'll have three minutes to speak. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody in the audience? Okay, let me check Zoom. Anybody on Zoom? <clears throat> It looks like it's just the team, so nobody else is on Zoom. All right, public comment then is closed. Reports, I see uh, Steve's online. Zoom. Morning, Steve. Good morning. Steve Carter. Yep. Take it away, Steve. All righty. Um, so we have financials for the month ending August 31st. For Hudson Sogany, we ended the month with two million nine hundred sixty-five thousand four hundred twenty-six dollars ninety-eight cents. Uh, a couple of disbursements for the month for engineering and financial advisor, some interesting <laughs> income, and uh, some Rolling Prairie deposits that I need to write a check back over to Rolling Prairie for. Uh, for Rolling Prairie. We ended the month at $142,880.11. Uh, and then that following page shows the breakout of um, that $142,000 by fund and the operation and maintenance fund. We have $114,948. Debt service reserve, $4,533. Bound and interest account, $23,399. And at the bottom, you see the outstanding uh, receivables uh, as of 831. For the toll road, we ended the month with 434,725. Uh, of that amount, 339,945 is in the Hoosier Fund and 94,780 in, in the Horizon Checking Account. Go ahead and start. Move on to claims, Steve. Uh, 
So the claims that were sent out to the board, there were some adjustments. And Jennifer, I think yes. I gave you. I have. <coughs> I have added the other two Indiana, Michigan invoices, which increased it by $150.44. So okay. the total claims is $156,844.01. I'll obtain a motion for the correction. Okay. So move. Second. All right. Okay, okay. roll call. Yeah. Right? Yep. Amanda? Aye. Mitch? Aye. Mark? Present. Marcella? Yes. Yeah. Dahlia? Aye. Just trying to get a little bit Okay, all approved. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, that brings up Ashbury. Is uh, Chris on? Yes. Yeah. Chris is on. Hello. Good morning. morning, Chris. Uh, morning. How is everybody today? Good. Um, I got uh, a couple a couple items here. Um, one uh, is the backflow. There's a backflow preventer at the waste treatment plant, and in the last couple of weeks it started leaking, so we got to get a repair pack package and do some routine maintenance on it. Um, number two is we'll be in, at the end of this month we'll be hauling uh, sludge and uh, receiving ferric. So those are the two big bills that happen uh, usually twice a year. Uh, but I don't think we've received ferric in over a year now. So um, the other thing, the other two things are. Uh, the battery backup has been purchased and installed, and uh, we did have uh, some excess flow over the weekend uh, of the 15th through the 18th of September. The uh, Pole Road Plaza had a had a uh, flushing toilet that was just uh, stuck wide open, <laughs> and they didn't do anything about it for four days, um, and that that was probably about. 60 to 65,000 gallons a day that just went from the water plant through the toll road closet into the waste treatment plant. Wow. Um, um, you know, and it, was, it, was, it could have been something as simple as turning a, a water valve and shutting off four toilets, uh, but they didn't do anything about it. Chris, we need to make sure then that we um, look at that for next month on the numbers and if we need to charge for that, we're going to need to do that. I think I think absolutely you do. I mean, it's not it's not a uh, a routine thing. It's something that really they could you know after one day they could have prevented, but they let it go on for four days. Okay. And and Chris did call me. He did go over to the toll road plaza and talk to the manager over there and didn't really get anywhere. So I think Ken even stepped in and sent an email. Um, well, send them a letter or an email or something and saying, hey, this is what happened and yeah. we expect to be paid for this and at the next time it happens, we need to have... Uh... I mean, on, on Monday morning, I talked to the, the plaza manager and he assured me he was going to get it done. I get there on Tuesday morning, everything's still the same. Talked to him again. And uh, it wasn't until Tuesday afternoon that I got there, and and I I was going to go shut off the valve, but he he ended up he ended up doing it. I, I said, all you got to do is shut this valve off, and he he knew that, but he was just waiting on someone else to fix it. So, okay. well, I don't know. Should we send him a letter or an email? Should, uh, yeah, absolutely, we should. I mean, I think you know the letter should say that we're going to charge you for this extra two hundred thousand gallons. Because you didn't, you know, you didn't shut a valve off. Well, I would suggest we wait and send the letter once we know what the number is. Yeah, I, and I think put and put a dollar amount on it. I think so because we can add it to their invoice, and then we also will have That's documentation. Fine. I just want to make sure there's some documentation because if this happens again, two three months down the road, then right. at least you have some documentation that this has happened before. Absolutely. And then we we'll also have um, the readings from this Chris that will show the actual usage that we can supply for them to see the difference. 
and I, and, I, and I'm actually I believe this is the second time we the first time it happened we did send him a letter so this this is probably the second time uh, this something like this has happened so it's not this is not original okay um, the, the, floor, the floor numbers are they typically probably at, at this time of year they are averaging uh, 15 to 20 thousand gallons and over that weekend they averaged 78 thousand gallons yeah okay all right we'll work on that next month once we have the reports and the numbers and we can provide the additional information yeah that's it that's all i have Thank chris you. going back to the first yeah the backflow preventer did you you repaired that you said uh it, we i we placed an order for the uh parts to to fix it and probably this week or next week will be repaired okay and that's just something you do you don't have to call anyone else in no we've we've got someone on on staff that that uh tests them and certifies them and then and, okay. and also uh replaces it yeah okay all Very right good. thank you thank you thanks uh moving on then item g uh, that's uh jpr Milling collections, liens, permit, inspection fees. What? Uh, what about? I'm sorry. Can we go back to Chris? Chris, what about the uh, automatic chlorine analyzer? Oh, oh yes. Um, I, I found out that the uh, the automatic chlorine analyzer. It, you know, the the cost for getting a repair kit is five hundred plus dollars, and don't know if that will fix it um you know they don't have they don't have anybody to repair it so they send me the repair kit and i can replace you know the parts that they send me and, and like i said the repair kit's five hundred dollars um so you know I, I just don't know which way the, the board wants to go just try to repair the unit or or look at uh, purchasing a new one right didn't we want to get a price on that well, I think that's the one that Chris discussed last month that it's um, out of, they don't make anymore, right? Is that right? Right, right. The, the company that was making them went out of business. So, so if, if yes, if I, I you know, if I get the repair kit and I change the parts out, if it doesn't, if it doesn't work, then. Right. So what's the next option then? Do the repair kit. Price on it. Replacing it. Price replacement. Which are Okay, so yeah. what, why don't we go ahead and get, what? would it make sense to go ahead and at least get a pro, the price. process going now and what the cost would the be price, and it. still replace it with a repair kit? Should, should he, so. In the meantime, in get the price meantime, out of replacement. Okay, yeah. so you want to try the repair kit, have him right. get the repair kit, we'll try it, and in the meantime, we're still going to be looking and start looking for a new one because we already know that there's no parts for right. for this and it needs to be updated. Yeah. And I, I Sound like a good plan? Does anybody have an idea what it costs to have a new one? I mean, we, we need to know now or later it's going to happen again, so... I, I don't at this time. We probably have to look into it, but um, I, I, approximately it's going to be seven to ten thousand dollars. Okay, put the repair kit in and get a price for a new one. Yeah, is that a motion, Mark? That's a motion. Second. <laughs> Roll call vote, please. Okay, one second. Let me get this written out. Uh. Uh, Mark was the motion. Second was who? Marcy. Marcy. Okay. All right. So, uh, Amanda. Aye. Mitch. Aye. Mark. Aye. Marcella. Yes. Dahlia. Aye. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry yes. to go back to that, but I thought that needed no, to be reviewed. No, that's not. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Okay, I'll, I'll get that done. Thank Appreciate you, Chris. All right, moving up to G. Um, that's me. Yep. Okay, nothing, nothing more than what we have already supplied. Um, if you guys have any questions, 
No. Oh. Oh, oh, I do have one property owner that would like reimbursement. Um, connected, provided inspection or um, permit paperwork July, was connected August 18th right around there and inspected and approved and then also um, sent me the paperwork in September and was asking the board but it was after our last meeting so I know we said last month we weren't going to approve anybody else so well, it's the board's pleasure <laughs> do we have to make a motion to extend this to a certain day you can just accept this, this, this one this, just this i think one, you can make think. a motion to accept yeah. this specific is there just one or two i have one okay we we've, we've done everything else on make there. a motion that we accept the final final <laughs> uh reimbursement <laughs> final, final. second I just had a question. So they're about a month past the, the deadline? For connection, yeah, less than a month, actually. Right. It was like 28 days. All right, motion so, second. Go ahead. Thanks. Mark, motion, second. Marcella? Mir. Mitch. Okay. Yeah. Amanda? Aye. Mitch? Aye. Mark? Aye. Marcella? Aye. Delia? Aye. Okay. Uh, That's all I have. All right, thank you. Uh, moving on to Dan, the phase two update. All right, thanks guys. So for phase two update, I know I'm gonna jump down to the engineering committee stuff on the agenda because that's what was, most of that was about. Uh, phase two update and use of remaining funds. So um, following our last meeting in, um, uh, following our last meeting at the tail end of August, we reached out to uh, SRF and confirmed the amount of remaining funds, uh, remaining grant funds left. The total we were given was $83,398. Um, I have listed on the agenda 73,398 because I believe Jennifer, there were 10 properties we were talking about, but I still have to forward that um, those reimbursement payments that we've done the last almost 10 to SRF. So that will bring that number down. Uh, it should be 11 now, right? I think I include that one in this one. Okay. So, so if that's one of the 10, then we are now sitting at 73,398 left in remaining funds. Um, so in the first portion of the engineering committee meeting, we discussed what we would like to explore um, going after a sec, or a, I guess it'd be a third PER amendment at this point um, for use of remaining funds and what we would potentially want to use that $74,000 for. And what we determined in the engineering committee meeting was uh, these options. Uh, number one, SCADA for generators at the rolling prairie pump stations at the Hatfield and 350 East stations, uh, chemical free feed system upgrades at those two stations as well. I think Jerry was interested in having level control systems installed in those. Um, spare pumps and parts for those stations. Um, after talking to Jerry, it sounds like he doesn't have any, any spare pumps or VFDs or anything to operate those stations. So uh, we'd look at getting pricing on that. A, a spare mission SCADA controller, a, a trailer mounted trash or bypass pump, and the last two items that we're going to investigate are we're going to request whether SRF will allow us to use that money on the um, water, water filter project at the TP3 water plant, uh, and then also potentially look at transferring that money over to the Hudson Saugany project. Uh, they've allowed that kind of thing in the past. so. Um, hopefully by the next meeting here, I'll come with, uh, with some, um, uh, price quotes for some of these items so that we can, was, uh, so this, uh, enumerated order, it's not, um, you didn't prioritize 
No, these are not by priority. These were just okay, items just we threw out. To, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to reach out to some vendors and get some price breaks on <laughs> right. on, uh, rep on spare pumps. And Sounds yeah, good, and then we can get all that information. Yep, and then Great. we can kind of create a wish list and pick and choose what we want to do. Right, and we'll base our uh, PER amendment around that. Sounds good. good. Thank uh, you. Excuse me, I have a question. Yes. Hello? Yes. Could we get that chlorine analyzer with this money as well? Um, possibly. Uh, usually the, um, they're, uh, you know, they're looking for things that assist with the operation of the district and that being a water related item. I'm not sure if, uh, if they'd allow it, but it's worth asking. I, I mean, I'm going to be asking them if uh, we could use that money for the water pressure, the, the water filter tanks. Why not? So water filter tank. I'll throw that in there while I'm at it. So. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Good job. Okay. Right, anybody have any other, anything else on going great phase two? Oh. All right. So I will jump ahead into item I here if you guys are all yep. set for that. Hudson. Sorry. All right. Uh, general project design. Um, just to bring you guys uh, a little reminder, we're looking at completing design in for the phase one project by the end of this month and submitting permits by the end of this month or early November uh, with bidding taking place in November and December of this year and proposed cl uh, project closing on phase one would be February of 2024 be our best case scenario. Um, I've uh, listed those proposed project contracts on there again for your reference you can look at them on your own time if you'd like. Um, with uh, equipment pre-selection, we currently have the pre-selected equipment vendors working on preparing their project submittals. Basically, they put together uh, drawings and specs for us that we use to include in our project plans. They're working on getting those to us so that we can keep rolling on the... Um, most of that stuff is involving the wastewater plant. The details on grinder pumps and things like that we've already got, so that's not really slowing us down. Uh, with the wastewater plant, we've uh, established flows and loadings for the system design. Also, over the last uh, month or so, we've been working on establishing flows and loadings at the existing TP3 plant um, in the Phase 1 project. Uh, and uh, what we've found is that these loadings that we're looking at, we might be looking at making some minor modifications to that plant uh, in order to basically increase the reliability of operation during the period where it's receiving flow from all of Saugany and the travel plazas. Um, basically what I've, uh, what I've found is that um, uh, some of the loadings are fairly high and we're looking at potentially converting the surge tank at that plant into a, another clarifier and converting the sludge holding tank into another aeration tank. So basically you'd be expanding the capacity of the plant a little bit to handle some of those higher loadings. Because what we're seeing is the, uh, the, the waste coming from the travel plaza is pretty high strength compared to what's gonna be coming from Saugany Lake. So those two, those two flows combined will kind of knock that waste strength down, but we wanna make sure we have adequate capacity and we've, brought uh, Asbury on board and run through all of this with them and that's what they'd like to see as well. Um, structural and architectural design of the wastewater facility is underway and the final design is going to take place once we get those uh, pre-selected equipment drawings, namely from Aeromod. Uh, they're uh, working on assembling their, their design drawings that we'll incorporate into our plans. On the wastewater collection system, completed hydraulic modeling of both lakes and we have set up preliminary plan and profile drawings for Saugany Lake pressure sewer and, and mainline force mains. I've reviewed alignments and elevations and we should be on track to submit permits by early November. And uh, while this is going on, we'll continue pushing Hudson Lakes drawings forward, forward as well so that those aren't sitting there. Um, <clears throat> 
with uh, geotech work. Uh, the last couple of months, we've gotten some complaints about restoration of the borings out there. And we generated a list of areas where those borings are unsatisfactorily restored and have instructed Terracon to repair them. I haven't heard anything back from them in a while. I'm going to swing out that way later today to see if they've <clears throat> handled, handled those. And if not, I'm going to push on them again. But we've, uh, uh, we did a thorough review of every boring on the entire job that we had ordered. So and we gave them a list of everything we wanted repaired. Item four, land acquisition on grinder station easements. Uh, packages have been sent out to everybody. We are currently meeting with property owners on a regular basis, uh, several times per week. Uh, many of the staff from our South Bend office have been coming over to the area and having meetings with several property owners at once. And uh, I guess since since our last meeting, we held the two open houses. I don't know that that's been discussed yet, right? Because they were the week of the last board meeting. Um, so those, uh, those meetings were a success. We had uh, several hundred property owners show up for the meetings and uh, we were able to get several easements signed during the during the meeting and otherwise we were able to provide information to the public in a system with uh, uh, showing where their proposed grinder, estate, grinder station locations are and making minor modifications or uh, uh, based on their input. <coughs> For mainline easements and, and pump station sites we're still conducting right-of-way research to determine where those are going to be needed. Uh, should be a minimal number of easements required and uh, we are currently preparing our offer packages to the uh, sites for the two pump stations. No easy task. No. No. No easy task. <laughs> Steve, do you have anything else to add on Hudson Saugany project update? Is that a no? You don't have your volume on. Good. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's fine, Dan. I have nothing else to add. Nothing to say. All right. Um, <laughs> I think the next item up, Steve, is the changes to the grinder station policy. Or the funding update. Oh, funding update. Let's talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> that's important. Yeah, didn't, Do we didn't have wanna, that's important. Didn't want to jump ahead on that. Ken, you want to touch on funding update? <laughs> yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Uh, okay, so um, there, uh, I think I think uh, John, John isn't present, but Marcy is. She was on the call with us uh, last week, I think it was, with uh, the folks at... Uh, the state revolving loan fund relative to what our expectations might be. We also had USDA on the phone with us discussing project overall budget and uh, procurement of funding. And we were kind of uh, somewhat surprised uh, from uh, comments made uh, uh, towards the end of that call from uh, Camille Miner, who was the uh, uh, technical reviewer for the, the uh, wastewater section at uh, State Revolving Loan Fund, where they seemed confused that we were advancing the project at the, at the speed that we were and that we were expecting to close, at least on the first project in the spring of 24. Um, so I was a little bit speechless uh, towards the end of that call, uh, not expecting uh, that, that uh, comment from the State Revolving Loan Fund. And, uh, so we did, I, I was able to confirm with, uh, with them that we were, in fact, moving the project forward at, at, the, at the speed that we would normally move a project forward. And we had specifically sent them some information indicating that we were probably going to have to break the project down into multiple phases. So um, I, after we hung up, Marcy and I had a little call. She was a little bit shocked by that. I'm sure John Carr was shocked by that. Um, and so uh, what that basically means is that they allocated, allocated their subsidization to other projects and not this project for this coming fiscal period. 
So um, I waited a few minutes, and just as I was picking up the phone to call Camille and reiterate, you know, what our intentions were, she called me. And she uh, uh, was somewhat apologetic, but was unsure as to how the confusion kind of set in. But um, she assured me that she was going to, uh, Jim, Jim McGough, who I think you folks might remember from the days of uh, their assistance with the Rolling Prairie Project is out on vacation. Uh, he's expected back um, either late this week or early next week. And uh, Camille is gonna have some dialogue with them, with him to make sure he understands what our intentions are in the timeline for this project. To be honest with you, we can't, we cannot proceed, in my opinion, we cannot proceed with phase one unless we are able to receive uh, not only funding from LaPorte County uh, for our ARPA request, but the subsidization at least at $5 million for the first phase. Right. Uh, I don't think we can deliver a rate that, that this board is going to be happy with otherwise. Right. So um, I'm hoping to hear back from her uh, as soon as she has that dialogue with, with Jim. I'm going to follow up with her uh, probably later today just to make sure that if, if uh, she isn't, you know, to confirm Jim's schedule so we can actually set up that call. Uh, in the past, uh, and as you know, the commitment to the district's uh, projects have been pretty significant, significant from the state revolving loan fund. And, and I don't think anything's changed there, but there appeared to be some confusion as to what we were actually asking for. So uh, th there wasn't any confusion on my part, but, but apparently on their part. So anyway, um, we, uh, we are clearly wanting to make sure that the board understands that we think that this project goes forward and our, it's gonna be our recommendation that this project goes forward in three phases. And the first would be the construction of the uh, force main connection from the wastewater plant to the to the Saugany Lake community, and then building out the entirety of the collection system at Saugany Lake. Um, according to the uh, to Steve Carter's uh, fiscal analysis, we should be able to deliver a project at around $100 a month uh, if we receive uh, five million dollars in subsidization from SRF and one and a half million dollars from the uh, LaPorte County ARPA allocation. And, um, and of course, that's also going to be dependent upon bids uh, at the time that the project uh, we received bids. And then following up, um, we would want to build the second phase, which would include all of uh, the improvements to the wastewater treatment facility in the first phase of or the first half of the Hudson project. And then phase three, the following year. So this is these are three construction years in a row. And the phase three, the following year, would be the finishing up of the Hudson Lake project. So uh, we are going to probably have to fight our way through uh, the program with SRF to to try to uh, uh, maximize their subsidization. We'd like to get five million dollars a year from them, but that is not going to close the gap entirely for the project. So we're working on other alternatives. And the good thing is that if we break the project down into to, uh, uh, phases that we'll have time to work through these. So currently, aside from having our dialogue with the SRF and straightening out that confusion, um, we are uh, preparing a um, application to the uh, US Department of Commerce EDA program. Uh, we have uh, opened up dialogue with their project manager for this uh, region, and uh, we are going to need a spokesperson from uh, from the board that can attend uh, every call uh, that we have with them. They typically, uh, I mean, they'll talk to us, but they want someone representing the owner to be also in that dialogue. And I don't know who from the board would want to volunteer for that. That'd probably be probably. Be likely would be Mitch, I think, yeah, if you're okay with that, Mitch. That's fine, Ken. And uh, so we are planning a call with them this week. Um, so the EDA program, it's not a catch-all, solve-all, but it could provide another 
$5 million in subsidization for one of the phases of the project. He's good. We are also, and you probably, I may have already mentioned this to you, we've already submitted for uh, in the READY program. Uh, we submitted a preliminary package to them. We're getting ready to follow up now that they've begun to release some of the uh, uh, guidance language. And um, that request is for, uh, and of course, we're, we're going to ask for the moon and hope we get the moon, but that request, I think, went in for about eight and a half million dollars. And then um, uh, John Carr uh, and I, uh, um, Randy Novak and um, uh, Rich Morozinski met with Rudy Yakim's office um, a week before last. Uh, we are formally making a request to the special projects uh, program. And those, if, you, if you're not familiar with that program, you would recognize it as earmark. And, uh, and that would typically be attached to the federal budget. Uh, LaPorte County had some success with that recently. Well, assuming the federal budget gets approved in its entirety, uh, Representative Mervin from the first district has had some success in poking uh, some, some projects into, uh, into that program uh, in, in the first con con congressional district. So we're asking for uh, the second congressional uh, representative to do the same. That could go two pathways for that request that would probably be, would typically go uh, with the federal budget, but can also go in the currently un unapproved uh, farm bill. So I'm following up with uh, Representative Yakim's uh, chief of staff to make sure he knows that, that he can actually attach our request to either uh, either uh, uh, budget. The Farm Bill, if, you, if you're aware, it's a, I think a three-year program and it's unapproved. The last one uh, is, has already expired. It expired last year. It's uh, like 365 days past due by now. Um, but they're expecting to take that up as they finish the federal budget. Uh, there'll be a lot less con contention in that program. Um, right now, uh, the Farm Bill has in it about five hundred and ninety um, billion dollars in in uh, infrastructure uh, funding, and so our little project that we'd be asking for, we're probably going to request somewhere in the neighborhood of, you know, eight to ten million dollars from either uh, the uh, the uh, federal budget or from the farm bill, and the goal is to aim high and uh, and then and then uh, work through uh, those. Uh, subsidizations. We would still be borrowing money um, from USDA for the wastewater plant and from the state revolving loan fund and potentially USDA for the collection system, depending on how those uh, projects would uh, would partner up or how those resources would partner up. But building the project in phases, it gets us time to work uh, on these uh, on these resources. Um, and uh, and also uh, try to get get to put together a package so when we finish this project up we can have a reasonable utility rate. And uh, so we're we're on this 100% uh, at this point in time, and we'll keep you updated as we make progress. Please keep us updated. <laughs> <laughs> I I think there you know there might be some thought about, and I hate to even bring this up right now. But there might be some thought about um, maybe throwing out the drag line a little bit on design efforts for the second and third phase. I hate to even bring that up, but uh, one of the things that we would want to know from our fiscal advisor is where do we start to be uh, concerned about our uh, debt service for our uh, bond anticipation note. And uh, maybe we could have Steve run some schedules to see uh, at what point in time we need to really kind of put the brakes on spending until we know we have funding at least for phase two. That makes sense. So, hmm. so, I guess I I guess I would ask Steve if he could if he could take a look at that and give us some advice back at some point. Right now we are with this month's invoices. We're at about eight hundred thousand that we've spent out of three and a half million. Um. 
timing wise, the uh, I went back and looked. The note expires January first, twenty twenty six. So we got a little over two years till we have to deal with refinancing or taking that out. So um, I don't know how much of that eight hundred thousand can or you know any future expenditures can come out of that first closing with the SRF. This um, one. Most of those expenditures are in design fees and. Um, and I think we talked about in the budget I sent you for the first phase, uh, including about a half a million dollars in design fees and then construction expenses, uh, overview expenses for the first project. So it will, you know, so it, it looks like we would be able to buy down. Uh, I mean, if, the, if, if, if we did spend one more dollar, we would be able to buy that down around 300 grand. But right now I would say, um, you know, we need to have some some discussion about, um, you know, what we don't, what we want to make sure of is that we don't run into a problem with our lender, and that are we covering interest right now with the deposit? By the way, we are in positive arbitrage currently, um, but you know we're paying on three and a half million, and we are earning on three million, so I'm not sure. I, I think we're still losing a little bit of money on interest, but. Um, interest rate wise, we're earning more interest. We're at like 5.2 as opposed to paying on five. But like I said, that, you know, we're paying 5% on three and a half million and earning three, 5.2% on less than 3 million now. So I think we're still losing a little bit each month. If we close on a project next, next year and, and buy down what we've, um, spin out at this point in time, we should be in pretty good shape, I'm, it sounds like. But I think what I'd like to be able to do is to tell the the, the board at the next meeting, um, Steve and Dan, uh, percent of completion relative to design, what are the critical points uh, that we've already achieved? And, uh, and if we were to slow down on the design, how long would it take to re to catch up again. Uh, I think it's a dialogue that the board would probably, uh, we should probably have with them until we confirm, until we can confirm that we are uh, heading in the right direction for funding the balance of the project. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, I mean, sense. we can fund it. We can certainly borrow the money, but I don't think it's a, a rate that the, the board is going to approve. Right now, if we receive no subsidization, I think we're talking about $200 a month. I don't think anybody yeah, wants to see that. Negatory. So, yeah. Yeah. So we want to we want to be, you know, down if possible in the you know under a hundred bucks at this point. <coughs> yeah, but read. you know there might be some hard decisions coming forward. But you know like like right now, let's talk about last night. So I was I was. Uh, I was at the county council last night trying to close the deal on the $1.5 million request from ARPA. The meeting went significantly long because their budget workshop uh, went for an hour longer than what was planned. And uh, there's a lot of a lot of dialogue. Um, it wasn't nearly as bad as the county commissioners meeting where we where we where they passed the the uh, the motion to request the full 1.5 million from the council, that was I don't know, I don't know Mitch if you were there, but there was a lot of people trying to hide. There was a lot of uh, animosity <laughs> going on between the elected officials there, oh, but they still approved it unanimously. The commissioners did, and then uh, and that, and I don't think they were really fighting amongst themselves. It was more with the with the auditor, I think maybe I don't know. I don't know the ins and outs of that. So last night, um, it wasn't a laydown. It was not a laydown. Um, I think uh, I'm going to follow up today with um, a couple of the board members that asked for additional information, um, and uh, I'm working on something that I can email out to the entire council. Uh, but this will come back before them at their next meeting, which I believe is the 23rd, for a final vote. Thirties. 
They moved it to the 30th. 30th. Yeah, it's actually the 30th. Okay. Is what so I'm glad told. you told me that because last night it was still the 23rd. You might want to double check it, but that's what we're hearing. Yeah. Okay. So well, I'll make sure. I'll make sure I'm there. Wouldn't be bad to have some representation. I was just going to say, you want some support. But, yeah. Yeah. But uh, I ultimately think that we will get uh, a, um, a majority vote in favor of that request. So, and, you know, as I've said before, and I told them before uh, at the council and the commissioners that one and a half million dollars is not, you know, uh, I mean, it's, it's not chump change, but what it certainly is, is a leveraging move on the heart of the part of the county to make sure that we're not only sitting in a better position when we're trying to get money out of ready uh, 2.0 uh, out of the uh, uh, U.S. or the uh, state revolving loan fund. And then, of course, if we can, if we uh, are successful with our request from from uh, the federal side, you know, showing that local uh, commitment is pretty important. So. Well, Ken, with that meeting with SRF and, and USDA and so forth, I mean, they said it was really important that we get, you know, some some type of contribution from the county. They it's, did. It's very important, they and they were pretty excited that we had even, you know, approached yeah. them and had dialogue with them. So, yeah. but so um, so hopefully within, and I will certainly be as soon as I know more from SRF. You know, um, I think we go forward with phase one project as if we're closing in the spring, as we're as if we're bidding and closing in the spring unless they tell us that they just don't have subsidization for us. Um, but I, I uh, you know, the, this, this district's uh, relationship with the SRF is strong. We've done, some, we've done some trading, horse trading back and forth with them, and they supported the rolling prairie at a level that I've never seen before. And uh, so I, 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 don't, uh, I don't doubt their commitment. Um, and again, I can't really explain um, why they why they didn't necessarily understand what we were requesting? So well, maybe we'll understand that in the next week or so. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I I think what I think what it was was uh, they, and I don't I you know I don't really know why they didn't reach out to us and say what are you asking here for? Yeah. Uh, I think they I think they might have thought that we were asking for $15 million in the first project, and they wouldn't be able to provide that. Um, but I thought we were clear enough saying that we expected to build the project in phases and that we wanted $5 million in each project in three consecutive years. We're still going to continue to ask for that. So, okay. But for whatever reason, uh, um, we didn't, that call didn't go as, as expected. We still have full commitment from USDA on the wastewater facility, and uh, and we're hoping to get zero interest money for the longest term possible for the pipe portion of all three projects, and uh, all of that adds up to a good to a good uh, um, program if we can uh, buy down the the debt, and that's what we're working on now. So, thanks, Ken. Thank you. Well, and, and by the way, so. The worst case scenario is we're, we're able to complete uh, Saugany Lake. And these projects might take a little bit longer as we work through the uh, subsidization requirements, but they will get done. We have not yet had a project that hasn't gotten done. So. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Ken. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Very good. All right. I think. Uh, Where are we at? Grinder. <laughs> yeah. Grinder station. Grinder station policy. Yes. Good morning. <laughs> Can you guys hear me? All right. Yeah. Great. <clears throat> so, in, in at the August board meeting, we presented a proposed uh, or modifications to the already adopted Grinder station policy, and. Those changes were more more clarifications and adding some more detail to the policy 
as this is especially as we start meeting with all the property owners we want to make sure that we're all on the same page and the property owners all have the same understanding of what the expectations are so we presented that to the board in august um, you asked that we meet with the engineering committee to review those in detail uh, we did that in september and the engineering committee uh, came out of that recommending that the board approve that revised grinder station policy so i'll let the board decide if you want me to still give you a brief overview of the changes from that or if you want to just take action based on the engineering committee recommendations no, I'm, I'm good with have you have you taken a look at it barry i have and okay. it's it's i mean it is a legal document but it's certainly more of a technical document than let's say an easement agreement or some of the other things i've looked at so yeah. um it looks perfectly fine well i'm okay with it unless the other board members want him to go through um anything i think it would be appropriate that there be a motion to accept the revised policy i make the motion second the roll call vote please Okay, so that is a motion to approve updated grinder station location guidelines. Yes. Okay, and that was by Marcy and second by Mark. Yes. yes. Okay. Amanda. Aye. Mitch. Aye. Mark. Aye. Marcella. Yes. Dahlia. Aye. All approved. Uh, moving on then. Thank you. Vacant lot policy. That's awesome. Yeah, this was another item that uh, we discussed with the engineering committee meeting. Again, as we have started meeting with property owners, as you know, out there in these lake areas, specifically on Saugany, uh, there are a lot of undeveloped lots. So that means there's no sewage producing structure on that property some property owners are maybe being a little forward thinking uh, knowing that if a sewer system comes it might be beneficial to have a grander station installed as part of the project for the uh for some some of their empty lots might help their resale value is what they're thinking so what we think it's important is that we kind of set a guideline right now for what that might mean because somebody shouldn't be able to because right now you only build customers uh, that have sewage producing structures is how the, the the program would work and we could not afford to put in grinder stations for a bunch of empty lots and not receive any compensation because we borrowed money put together a financing package to pay for this so option one that we looked at would be if a vacant lot owner wants to be part of the project then the property owner must uh, number one execute a special agreement that commits the property owner to pay um, the debt service only portion of a bill and we need to do that because this regional sewer district has uh, no authority to force connections and therefore force payments to properties that aren't producing sewage if you know an existing house if you have a property owner that for instance doesn't sign an easement uh, we don't install a grander station you still have the authority to require them to connect to the system and, and pay a monthly bill and what we've seen in um, other projects like this of similar size um, it's important that the district you know collect as much revenue as possible where possible and what we've seen work pretty well is in those cases of an empty lot where a property owner wants to have a grinder station installed, <laughs> that they be required to pay what we call a debt service only portion of the monthly bill. That would be the, the part, you know, paying for the financing of the project. But they wouldn't pay the operations part of that bill until such time they build a structure and connect to the system and start producing sewage. And uh, that's something that we have seen work well uh, in other projects. 
and and we're we're also saying if we go with that that option one that property owner must indicate their intentions to be a part of the project prior to us going out for bids because once we go out for bids bids are received we close on financing we've closed on financing for a specific type of project with so many grinder stations so anything after that property owners could still come on but then they would pay the full cost of a grinder station to be added to the project and that's how we see uh this work we're currently going under a project under construction in Kosciuszko County that has about 1,800 customers, and and we're proceeding that way. Of course, another option would be don't provide any service at all to non-sewage producing structures, and anybody would just have to come on in the future at their own cost after the project's done. We again discussed that with the engineering committee uh, meeting uh, in September and. Uh, their recommendation was that we proceed with a vacant lot policy that indicates that uh, somebody can come on board prior to bidding uh, and have to agree to pay the debt service portion of the bill. They also must sign, of course, an easement to allow us to put a grinder station on their property. That was a, the recommendation of the engineering committee meeting, and if the board is on board with that scenario, we probably want you to take action and then we'd help draft up a formal policy on that uh, that can be out there uh, yeah. on the website, et cetera, for uh, property owners to see and uh, consider their options then. Any discussion or questions on that? That, for me? that seems pretty reasonable to me. How long will it take you to um, come up with a policy? Oh, uh, we can have some, it, this would be a short one pager. Um, I can have something for Barry to review here in the next week or so. Yeah. Would, would the policy, Steve, be the same? I mean, is there a document that the, there must be a document that the owner signs to express their commitment, right? Some type of written, I yes. don't know if it's a contract. Barry, we something. can share you a sample agreement that we've used in other projects, Okay, uh, you know, prepared by other uh, legal counsels that um, you could take a look at, but it's basically okay. that property owner expressing their uh, commitment to pay that debt service bill. Okay. Uh, Should we wait on the motion until that's provided uh, to us? Uh, Steve, are you looking for a motion though? I, I think they're probably looking for a board motion to adopt the engineering committee recommendation. Fine. Then the, what I would call cleanup work can be orchestrated between, I don't think the board would need to approve that one page agreement necessarily as long as they give Steve and I the discretion and right. mm -hmm. to, to finalize it. Uh, I'll kind of motion then. I think approve the engineering committee's recommendation. So move. Second. I thought Amanda had a question. I do have a question on how that works if the property sells, the vacant property sells, does that follow to the new property owner? They're saying yes, I'm that just... agreement that is similar to an easement agreement where it stays with the property not the property owner. So okay. does it actually get recorded, Steve? It can certainly be recorded, yes. So I would think that would be really the only way we could it runs with the land, not the owner. Yeah, the only way you really you, go. Yes. you can say it runs with the land, but if it doesn't get recorded, it's pretty hard to enforce it. I'm pretty sure we recorded all those, Steve, previously. Yes. Good. Mm -hmm. right. yep. You'd want that you'd want that Thank to come you. up on a title search when there's a change of hands. So Correct. Thanks. Um, so we got a roll call vote. Second. Yeah. Okay. Motion was by Mark. Second by who? Marcy. Marcy. They're really kicking butt the motions today. These two. Yeah, we're they're getting seconds. real aggressive, aren't <laughs> yeah. they? Okay. Amanda. Aye. Mitch. Aye. Mark. Aye. Marcella. Aye. Delia. Yeah. Aye. Aye. No thanks. Uh, moving on then to uh, notice of statutory exemption and extension of service letter. Yes. Um, you know, one of the critical parts in a project is that um, there, there's there's two items that Barry can expound on this. Um, when we are ready to submit our first permit application, and as we've talked about here recently, we're looking more at a phase one project. 
it should be okay. uh, Saucony Lake. There's there's a couple things that need to happen. Uh, number one is the district needs to provide a formal notice to those properties that will be served of the district's intent to serve uh, with the wastewater system. Secondly, then there's also the formal notice that's required to be sent out to those same uh, property owners about the notice of statutory exemption. And the statutory exemption uh, describes the property owner's uh, rights or obligations that they would need to follow if they intend to request an exemption from the project. Uh, again, on uh, most of our projects that we see out there, we see that letter being sent out at this it's it's a combined letter that combines both the notice to serve and the uh, notice of statutory exemption and as dan mentioned we are expecting to send our item permit application for Saugany lake in early november uh, we have drafted uh, this letter out Barry has reviewed it in detail. I don't believe that made it to the board packet. So is that correct, Jennifer? Yes, yes, it did. They have it. Oh, it did. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Barry has offered some comments on uh, what was what we had prepared, uh, primarily some cleanup of language, etc. Uh, but we just wanted to get ahead of the game so that once we submit uh, our permit application. The way we understand the, the 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 law on that is that that notice should be served within 10 days of when that permit application is submitted to IDA. So we just wanted to get our ducks in a row, make sure that this letter was uh, ready to go out, and I just wanted to see if the board had any uh, discussion on that, um, or we could either approve that today, or we could approve it. At, we do have a regular board meeting here in a few weeks, uh, the regular October board meeting. Uh, no. I, a, lot, a lot of it's re reinstating uh, Indiana code. Yeah, the, uh, they, I mean, so. yeah. JPR provided a great template. Obviously, we're, we're going to do as a board a much better job on this project than we did, quite honestly, in either phase one or phase two of Rolling Prairie of erring on the side of notice, notice, notice. Mm -hmm given what we ran into in Rolling Prairie phase two and some of the delays we had. So um, really it's a, it's a, it was a good template. I just made some changes due to the update in the statute that gives a few more uh, options for a homeowner when they submit application materials for an exemption. But I don't see why the board wouldn't necessarily give approval now, mm -hmm. regardless of when it gets sent out. I don't think there's gonna be any additional tweaks to it and I think in addition, item, oh, sorry. I was going to say, Steve, just my understanding, too, of the updated statute is not so much the statute regarding the exemptions, but the statute about the notice is we probably ought to send these out certified mail or I get that's a huge cost, but we, that we'll, we can talk about that. <laughs> Jennifer, based on the look she's giving me, may want to talk about that. There's no okay. statutory requirement for that, by the way. Okay. And there is something to be said for not sending certified mail as a lawyer who sends out certified yeah. mail all the time. 50% of certified mails always come back unclaimed. doesn't matter if you have a check in there for somebody. They don't want it if it's coming in a certified letter. So, but I think we have to send out notices, whether it's certified or regular. Okay. We do publication notice, and then we also have to post it on the website. So we, yeah. we do not want anyone to not know that we are thinking of expanding service. Okay. I also, um, Steve and Dan worked with Amanda and got some dates for a meeting regarding the exemptions and how we're going to handle those. So I'll, when we get back, I'll go over those times with you guys. Great. Yeah, that's the other part I was going to uh, make that we have uh, went to sit down with Amanda and her department and make sure we're all on the same page about how the health department wants to handle these or perhaps delegate uh required exemptions etc uh, to to other entities which the law provides for we just wanted to make sure we're all on the same page so when these letters go out we're we're set to be able to uh start tracking these requests for exemptions and then 
tracking the inspection side of that as well. <clears throat> All right. Well, I'm okay with, uh, personally, okay with uh, um, approving um, the, uh, uh, yeah. Any okay. questions or I don't know. No. Make a motion to approve. Second. Please. Roll call vote, please. How are we doing? We're doing good. Amanda? Aye. Mitch? Aye. Mark? Aye. Marcella? Yes. Dahlia? Aye. <sighs> Thanks, Dan. Steve? Ken? A new business. Moving on to new business. Hmm. I just want to maybe make a quick report just because we have somebody in the audience here. So we have Corey Fredrickson, who's in the audience. Corey, wave Corey. <sighs> Corey, by the way, in the interest of full disclosure, I've done work for Corey and his family. Um, he operates Michigan City Campground. Mitch is aware of this, but uh, he's come to the point where he's either got to make a decision to upgrade a septic system on his site, which could be a quarter million dollars or more, or where for a little more money, potentially tap in to the new sewer line being placed out at 421 and 300 by the Michigan City Sanitary District. Mm -hmm. So while that doesn't affect the district from a financial standpoint, um, Corey reached out to the sanitary district, who then contacted Jim Meyer. Jim Meyer contacted me. I think Mitch was involved. Jerry was involved. And at some point, I think we're going to be asked to kind of decide whether we're okay with waiving that portion of our territory. Because if you recall, our territory is basically everything in LaPorte County, not already in a conservancy district or not being served by the city of LaPorte or the city of Michigan City. So because just like we did, we already did this, remember, for the 421-300 yep. project. Yep. But I believe that Michigan City Campground is further south along mm -hmm. 421. So I think probably all Mr. Fredrickson wants is just kind of a general idea if, if this is something the board will go along with because he's then got to expend money on engineering and significant fees with the sanitary district. Now, I will tell you, it prompted a broader discussion from Jim Meyer about, well, okay, you guys decide if, and we probably don't. I mean, it's a board decision, but I, I, I don't know that that is necessarily an area since it's fairly easily served by the sanitary district right. that would be one of our big priorities. Um, I think that's what we've all sort of that all along. discussed that in previous meetings right and i don't know if there's and uh, michigan city does have plans i've seen them in the past um when al wallace was there actually um to serve all the way to the continental divide or to mm -hmm. operate some ring they had like a 20-year plan or something how far is that mitch from like uh, from 94 is it a mile how far mr more like 6,700 feet to get to the campground. Oh, yeah. So he, he's definitely within that. Yeah. Area. But Jim Meyer Total kind of brought up space. a broader discussion, which Mitch is alluding to, which is, okay, rather than doing this ad hoc, because maybe next it'll be somebody else and Definitely. somebody else, at some point maybe we ought to have a discussion, sanitary district board, regional sewer district board, if we just want to do kind of a broader exemption for certain areas, and I think the only area really we're discussing is probably that area. Mm -hmm. We've already done that, remember, for Renaissance mm -hmm. School, but rather than have this come up every four months while Another Michigan problem. City expands southward, do we just kind of say, okay, look, everything from this point to this point, we're happy to waive our jurisdictional territory if the sanitary district is willing to serve it. So I don't think we need any board action. I just think probably before I start on the board's behalf, discussions with Jim Meyer on the sanitary districts, get a general feel from the board if this is something yeah. that are we following could, with I kind of our general. To yeah. Look at the county plans and what you know we anticipate, um, any capital improvement areas. That area. Growth areas. I don't know. Yeah. We want to relook at Westville and some areas there. Maybe if I look at a map and draw, do some drawings, as to what I feel, maybe over a twenty-year course, of what would be acceptable? Yeah, I'm okay with that. Yeah. So, what would be his timeline? I mean, does he want to get this pretty quickly? Like, would it be? I want to start. Oh, start construction. Can we come to the mic? Okay. Could you come to the okay. mic, Corey? Okay. So, 
Right now I'm just waiting on approval so I can start the engineering. Okay. If I can't get the approval, there's no sense in spending 60000 on engineering. Right. right. Just go to well, so Corey would probably got to do, he needs something a little quicker, so. Yeah, I, what I might suggest is I'll follow up with Jim Meyer and okay. say, Jim, look, why don't you make a formal request for this project? Sure. Unless you're thinking so that maybe it's on our calendar for the next board meeting. Absolutely. Would that be okay with you then if we could yeah. start moving that quickly? Yeah. Until okay. the next board meeting, which is scheduled. Exactly. Well, yeah, I'll see if, I don't know when the okay. sanitary district meets, but it'll be the October worst case would be November meeting. And that way you'd be in a position to know. I, mean, I think we need, typically they ask, they, have a, they submit a formal request. Huh. We then vote a resolution to approve the request. So the worst case scenario would be maybe whenever our when's our next board meeting. Well, I don't know whether Jim will have it done because I don't know what his schedule is in the next two weeks. Yeah, we but want worst to do case it would two be. phases with the one to right. get this one going with ASAP, it. and then the other one as a broad one. Uh, take a little longer, and yeah. it may take a little bit yeah, longer. Yeah. If I'll follow up with Jim and see if I, I would think maybe as long as his his board has to meet obviously between now and our board meeting to approve the request so okay. yeah. otherwise it would be the november meeting okay you okay with that yeah okay yeah, you can't do any work anyway, really. to too, too cold oh. yeah maybe i don't know it's kind of weird <laughs> weather that'd be 80 then all right <laughs> thanks okay all right next meeting october 24th yes Is everybody good um Everybody will be here. Hold on. Let me look. Oh my! It's twenty-four. Diary. I know I'm supposed to go to a water park with the kids. I see what they do. <laughs> Don't try to get out of it. Yeah. It's already there. I'm available. Yep. Oh yeah, I already have it on my calendar, so I guess I'm available. You should. I sent all the invites out. Uh, you did. You did great. Thank you. Hey, I want to say something to everybody, that, the team members that are on the uh, yeah. video and, and everybody. We appreciate everything that, uh, I don't want this to be political, but I think you guys are doing a great job. Keep it up, and uh, you're making our job easier and easier. Thank you. How's that? Nice, Mark. Hey, hey, um, so response to that was we appreciate those comments and uh, this is what we love to do. Um, the only anchor we have is Jennifer. We have to drag her along on everything we do. <laughs> Thank God. Okay. Thank God. I love that weight there, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> she wears you, many Jennifer. hats. Okay, I'm going to remember that, guys. Many hats. And Ken. Uh, I love you, Jennifer. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, what do we got here? Old business, I guess. Yep. I have um, our IT guy here, and he is going to hand you guys um, your laptops, okay. and we will start showing you how to use those. Okay. And then I'll get with the others that aren't here. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. When we're done. And then uh, rate ordinance, I have that in my possession. I started digging into it, and I think we can use a lot of the ones from the Tippy Chapman one. So I'm adding some more definitions and information that we'll have to look at. But I would like to get, um, are we doing that in front of the engineering committee? Is that who we're? Is that, um, I don't know if that's. I don't remember. Oh, whether I. I don't know whether that's engineering or executive, executive. committee. I, think that was I was thinking executive, executive. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there, right. there is a lot of detail in a rate ordinance. There is a lot of. But so I'm gonna if either way. Involved with the executive, I, then I'm good with that. Yeah, he's definitely involved yeah, in this whole on thing. The executive committee. And I think we will. Um, John. I'm gonna try to get that scheduled in the next <laughs> week or two, so we can all take a look at it, so we can have it for next meeting. Cause that meter's a ticking. Yep. Okay, I'm good with that. Okay. So then we go to adjourn. Mo motion uh, to adjourn. Adjourn. Uh, you want to do that? The computer. We're, yeah, we're Second. Gonna motion to adjourn, and then we're going to do yeah. that after we adjourn. Second. That's fine. Second. Oh, yeah. All in favor? Aye. Oh, roll call. Amanda. Roll call. Aye. Mitch. Aye. 
Mark? Aye. Marcelo? Yes. Dahlia? Aye. 